distorted history you know so the distorted history is for, for, for Africans on the motherland and overseas to hate themselves more okay. right so you, you don't have anything like self-awareness you don't even have a reason to come to Africa oh these people that slave me but if you know the history then you know where you are coming from how much did they sell the people for in this market well, the items they exchanged human beings for was basically items like guns, gunpowder, you know, things that fueled ethnic warfare more. Copper pans, iron bars. So from the iron bars, you can make chains and shackles. You can make weapons. So these are some of the items the Africans got back. So basically, let's say the Africans got back peanuts. You know, versus you selling labor, selling real money, versus getting guns, gunpowder. You know, so the items they exchanged things for did not make any economic sense in the long run. Because it was a long term ben benefit of firearms, gunpowder, tobacco, trinket, and all that. And what was a long term benefit of our ancestors? Working on the plantation farms without being paid. So you, you can clearly see the gap between the New World, the West, and Africa. So always remember that there is this 300 years, more than 300 years gap. So let me... Go All right, so brothers and sisters, come a bit closer, then I draw attention to something. So when you look around you, can you see the guns? Yes. You now the gun surrounds the castle, and you find some of the gun pointing to the land, some of the guns pointing into the ocean. So this is to say, people resisted slavery. Can you repeat that please? I think people need to hear that again. Yeah, so you find gun, guns pointing to the land, guns pointing to the ocean. So most of the time, the ocean or the sea attack was their fellow Europeans trying to take this place. Go to Portuguese. What? Portuguese, Spanish. Spain, France, Dutch. Dutch um, Danes, Danish, you name them. There's another gun, there are some guns also pointing to the land. This is to say there was also resistance from the Africans. That's right. So in case of any resistance, then the guns will be used against them. So one thing we should understand is this. Not everybody in Africa condoned the transatlantic slave trade. Some empires, some kings and queens had the foresight. They knew the negative impact of slavery. I'll mention one. Her name was Queen Nzinga. Yes. Or Queen Njinga of um, Angola. You know, Njinga realized that slavery was depopulating Angola, making Angola weak, because she realized that with time, everybody will be taken out and these people will rule. That's right. They'll rule the land. So she resisted. She was attacking the Portuguese here and there. But the thing is, she didn't get much support from her people. You understand? So later, the Europeans saw her as a threat. Was she the only woman? Currently, we know of um, Queen Zenga, but in Ghana we had one. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that one also. Um, her name was Ya Asantewa yeah. or Nana Ya Asantewa. Um, then let me let me let me start by saying something about the Ashantis. So in Ghana we have so many tribes or let me use ethnic groups. We have about 49 of them. Some centuries back 
the Ashantis had the biggest empire in Ghana. So this is to say the Ashantis ruled about 60% of this country. But before they came to dominance, they were disunited. So one man by the name of Setutu and a priest brought them together. So um, it is believed that a priest prayed to the ancestors and to the oracles. A golden stool came up from the sky. So it's basically like we are, we are all kings and queens, right? We are in the same area. We are not one. So when we are attacked by other tribes, it's just you fighting, not all of us fighting. So we realize, we realize that we're vulnerable. So then there was this thing like, okay, we are gonna assemble here. A golden stool is gonna come from the skies. Whoever the golden stool falls on, it can fall on you, you, you. Whoever the golden stool falls on, he or she is going to be our leader. So we all swear allegiance behind that person. We bring our armies together and we see that person as our leader. So the golden stool among the Ashantis was the symbol of strength and unity. So yes, they became powerful. They dominated this country at some point in time. Now, the English came, slave trade. Now, after the slave trade, they wanted power. And I'll tell you why they wanted power. They wanted power because they realized that Ghana was sitting on the largest gold that was in Africa. And the Ashantis were the ones sitting on that gold. How do I get the gold? I can only get the gold by subduing the Ashantis. And if I get a majority, I rule over everyone. So now, the British fought the Ashantis 1824, but the Ashantis trashed them in battle. The British and the Fantis tried again, they were trashed. That's what they did. Now, England realized that there was no way they could ever defeat Ashanti alone. What do they always do? Divide and conquer. Ashantis have a lot of local enemies. Let me bring the local enemies on my side. This is what the British did in 1874. So with that, the Ashantis were defeated. But the Ashantis were still, they were uh, people of pride. They still rallied behind the Akin. Later on, the British demanded the golden stool. Remember I spoke to you about the golden stool? Yes. Yeah, so the British demanded the golden stool of the Ashantis. And it's just like the Ashanti kings were afraid to fight another battle. They merely gave up the golden steel. But Ya Asantua was the queen of Ajiso. She owned up and said, don't we have men in the shanty? Yes. If there are no men in the shanty, I'm going to rally all the women mm -hmm. in the shanty. Mm -hmm. And these women, I'm going to leave them to fight and defend the golden steel. She motivated the men. And when she was 60 years plus, she led the Ashanti army into war mm. against the British in defense of the Golden Stone. She fought fiercely and bravely, but unfortunately she was subdued. By the end of the day, it was a win-win-win for Yaa Santwa and the Ashantis, because as a result of her, her effort, her motivation, the British never got hold of the Golden Stone. Amen. So there were there are, there, are, there are women in, in in Africa that resisted European oppression, that resisted slavery. You see, they don't tell you these stories. So that's why I would say, you know, unfortunately, it's the same story here. We have a distorted history here. We have a distorted history across. And Alert is even getting worse in the United States that they are trying to pass a law preventing people from talking about the slave trading classrooms. Oh, that's Florida. Florida. That's Texas. <laughs> See, so it is always good to, to learn. All right, I also want to draw attention to what's on the hill. You see, there's a fort, can you see it? Yes. So that's Fort William. The British built that fort to protect their investment from their fellow competitors. And I always say nothing has ever changed. You know, still, the superpower countries would have their satellites monitoring their airspace yeah. to make sure that no country is throwing bombs at them. It was the same thing some years ago. Now the English had the castle, they had their fort, they had their men watching all over. 
So in case of any country attacking, France, whatever, then they give them information here, then they get the guns ready. And, you know, so unfortunately, as a result of this, the English lived here in this country for more than 300 years. So for more than 300 years of England looting or stealing Ghana's or Africa's natural and human resources. So that has been, that was applied. And also the churches. Right is the Methodist Church, left is the Church of England, beyond the Church of England is the Catholic Church. Any questions or comments before we move on to the governor's space? Let's see the governor's space. Mm -hmm.